everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today what we will be discussing about is the topic that how flying training actually happens in India. In this video we will be going through the, the syllabus of flying training, the bifurcation of hours and what are the different requirements that we actually fulfill for getting our commercial pilot license. So through our initial phases of uh, pursuing the training of commercial pilot license, we are guided that the first thing that we must do is get through with our class 2 medicals. Once we are through with our class 2 medicals, we should actually as soon as possible get through with our class 1 medicals as well. So that we can ensure that we are completely medically fit to get our commercial pilot license. The second thing that we are guided towards is to complete our ground classes. The different subjects that we go through, the aviation meteorology, air regulations, air navigation, technical general, technical specific, and RDR, these all are the requirements of getting a commercial pilot license. So now we'll see the main section of the aircraft rules 1937 that defines the different regulations or that defines the different requirements that are there to get a commercial pilot license. Now on your screens right now you can see the section L of schedule 2 of the aircraft rules of 1937. Now what this section is actually describing is that we must get our class 1 medicals, we must be through all of our DGC exams, we must have a valid FRDOL license which actually you get only after passing your RTR examination and that makes the whole RTR examination ka funda more clear that why you need to get RTR examination is that so that you can actually get a FRDOL license which is one of the requirements of getting your CPL license. One thing that is not mentioned here in this section which is another requirement of getting your CPL license is getting your English language proficiency certificate. It is a requirement which is mentioned in section uh, in Schedule 2, Section 6A of the aircraft rules itself, which describes that a pilot must have an English language proficiency certificate, which must be given through a proper organization which has been certified by the DGCA for issuing English language proficiency certificate. In short, we call it ELP. So, when you have your class on medical, your uh, all the DGCA exams cleared, you have your 200 hours as per the syllabus of DGCA, which in a little while we will be discussing that how actually it happens and fourth your FRTOL R and PLP boom you will apply for you can apply for your CPL and get your commercial palace going specifically towards the flying training area which is the most foggy when we are going through our ground class flying training syllabus is not like something some other examinations which in which you get a certain syllabus you study through it and then you get a written paper and you just write whatever you have marked up and you are passing something. Flying training is a different aspect and understanding the flying training requires a perspective which you only get after you enter flying school. Now through this video what I try to accomplish is that I can deliver you that information of that basic level of understanding about how flying training happens which can actually help you in selecting your flying school and also giving you a basic idea through the initial phases of your training so that you can actually better plan your training. Now we will move towards the bifurcation of 200 hours and how actually flying training happens in India. Now moving towards the flying training area, the flying training before moving towards the bifurcation of 200 hours, first we need to understand what are the different kinds of flying that we actually do and then we'll move towards understanding that how do we complete the all the different requirements of 200 hours that is prescribed by DGCA as our syllabus for commercial pilots license. As you move towards your flying training, the first thing that you will be doing is getting your student's pilot license. You have to give the examination and I'll make a separate video regarding student pilot license and how you actually get it. It is basically a license that is issued by your flying training organization that is an FTO so that you can actually continue or start your flying training. Now, in, in the initial phases of your flying training, you will be basically learning to maneuver the aircraft. So this is the initial 5 to 7 hours where you will be taught that how basically an aircraft climbs or descends or turns, how you can maintain state and level and the different maneuvers that you can make with an aircraft. Once you have got a basic hold of understanding of how the aircraft maneuvers, then the next stage that you move towards is your local flying which includes circuits and landings and general flying. 
first you move towards circuits and landings what are circuits and landings it's like just roaming around a runway you just take off you make one circuit and then you land within a 1.5 nautical miles you remain of the runway circuit through your circuits and landings what you are trying to perfect is your takeoffs your landings your turns your climbs and your descents these are the different practices that are there in circuits and landings initially you go dual that is an instructor is there to teach you and once you have become pro efficient enough that is the major that is the most renowned stage that we call as solo the first the solo stage comes for circuits and landings circuits and landings mein when an instructor thinks that you are able to take off the aircraft make a valid circuit and then land back safely then an fi that is a flying instructor takes your check and then releases you solo for the first time which is called as your first solo and which is very widely celebrated through the flying industry now as soon as you get, you have you are basically required to give multiple solo checks so that the academy can ensure that once you are completely released solo that you can take the aircraft on your own and land back safely once you are done with your solos and you start to building your solo hours now the importance of solo hours or the pilot in command hours will discuss when we'll be going through the requirements of the 200 hours that is prescribed by dgca now once you have you are able to roam around the runway through 1.5 nautical mile the next stage is that you are then trained to be released on general flying general flying is just going a little bit further going 10 to 20 10 to 20 nautical miles away from the runway then being able to navigate your way back to the runway which is known as general flying this is your local flying that is the flying that you do around the local area of your aerodrome then the next thing that you go towards is your cross country flying cross country flying is a further step you move a further step ahead now you go beyond 100 nautical miles ka one leg and then you try to get back to the runway after going at least the first leg more than 100 nautical miles then the other parts of flying training are instrument flying and night flying instrument flying is basically flying just relying on your instruments not looking outside and just using your instruments to navigate your way back to the runway the different procedures if procedures which are required in instrument flying is a requirement of cpl with ir and cpl without ir both then we move towards night flying night flying is basically doing general lead circuits and landing and general flying 30 minutes after the sunset and 30 minutes before the sunrise so in this time period whatever whichever flying you do is called as night flying once you are done with so this is the different types of flying that you actually do through your training and now we'll move towards the syllabus of 200 hours and how all of these are actually utilized in your flying training now moving towards flying training requirement of 200 hours with cpl if we are doing cpl with multi engine and instrument training so now we'll see ki how what are the different requirements and how do we actually fulfill it, fulfill these requirements with the different kinds of flying that we actually discussed earlier so the major requirements are that we must have 100 hours of pilot in command or solo the thing that we discussed ki dual and solo once you're released solo it's a, your solo time is differently logged and you must have minimum 100 hours of pic or solo in your 200 hours then out of these 100 hours of pic solo the 50 hours of this pic solo must be pic cross country that means the cross country flights which i in which the first leg straight leg should be greater than 100 nautical miles these 100 out of these 100 hours at least 50 shall be of your pic cross country hours now out of these 50 hours of uh, solo pic cross country you must conduct one cross country flight which is of 300 nautical miles and you are required to land at two different airports you are required to land at two different places other than your departure aerodrome in this cross country flight which is one of the requirements out of these 50 hours of pic cross country time in this you need 5 hours of night pic 5 hours of night pic you must have a 10 take offs and landings to get your cpl then the instrument flying the another thing that we actually do 
we must have 40 hours of instrument flying out of which minimum 20 hours you are required to do on an aircraft and another 20 hours you can actually do on the simulator now the catch here is that if you will open and see the requirements of section L of the schedule 2 you'll see that it is written that you must have 50 hours of instrument flying time to get your CPL with instrument rating but actually what we do is that if you will see the separate requirement of instrument rating which you can see on your screens right now this specifies that you only need out of the 200 hours for getting an instrument rating you only require 40 hours of instrument time out of which 20 must be minimum on the aircraft so we actually utilize the provision of getting an instrument rating other than getting the CPL with IR totally so that we have to complete 10 hours less of instrument flying time as per the rules this is just something you can call it a loophole or we play around with this thing to get only 40 hours of instrument flying requirement the second thing is that the simulator now what is the importance of simulator this 200 hours is on aircraft you must have 200 hours on the aircraft and out of these the sim time will not be counted in these 200 aircraft uh, 200 hours now why do we actually prefer to do 20 hours on sim and out of these 20 hours if you are going for your multi-engine rating multi-engine may mostly to get your multi-engine rating what you require is your 25 hours on multi-engine in which maximum of 10 hours you can actually do on a simulator so what out of these 200 hours we dedicate 15 hours for multi-engine the multi-engine operations are always dual the instrument flying hours will always be dual and the other requirements that we discussed to get your initial training before you are released solo there are multiple checks that you actually need to give to getting general flying release to get your cross country flying release now the whole catch here is that the minimum requirement that we full try to fulfill of 100 hours of PIC there are certain amount of dual hours or that we actually have to do now the more amount of dual hours that you actually do out of these 185 aircraft 185 hours the more hours you do a dedicate toward your dual the less you will have as your PIC hours if you are not able to get 100 hours PIC out of this 200 hours or 185 hours then you'll have to extend and do more of PIC hours and pay extra to the company and basically pay extra to get your CPL that is why some people actually have to do about 210 220 hours right to get their CPL license now the calculations of each and everything that how to actually how many dual hours how many solo hours do I actually do how many buffer hours do I actually have what are buffer hours basically buffer hours are the hours of the remaining dual time that I actually have after completing the 100 hours of PIC requirement with 50 hours of PIC as cross country so this calculation I will be making another video in which I will be discussing with you guys that how to actually calculate and plan your flying training accordingly so you make sure that you complete all the requirements within these 200 hours and you don't have to extend more than 200 hours to complete your flying training and get your CPL. This being the reason that we actually do 20 hours of IF on SIM. We make sure that we utilize most of the SIM time leaving more room, more buffer to getting your solo or PIC completed within the 200 hours of flying time. Now once you have done, once you are done with all the requirements, the next thing that you are left is your checks. The checks that is actually taken by a DGCA approved examiner. Now checks, your checks for your CPL, you must do your general flying test by day. You must do your general flying test by night. This 120 nautical mile the cross country you are supposed to do in night. This 250 nautical miles the cross country you are supposed to do in day. You are supposed to give your instrument rating test to get your IR which is one of the requirements of after completing your instrument flying time you must also have given an instrument rating test then only you will be issued a instrument rating on your CPL after completing the requirement there is another catch to completing your requirements 
the catch is that before the date of application all these tests must be done within 6 months these have a validity of 6 months if not if after completing your checks if you didn't don't apply for your cpl within 6 months then these checks are lapsed and you have to redo them again similarly this recency requirement this is the there is some certain recency requirement what do i mean by recency requirement recency requirement requires that before the date of application there are certain amount of hours which you have must completed with a given time that is within 6 months you must have had 15 hours of solo pic solo or pic so basically within 6 months you must have completed 15 hours of solo pic time these 5 hours night pic you must have completed within 6 months and out of this instrument time 5 hours of if you must have completed within 6 months and within 6 months you if you have gone through these tests and completed all of the requirements then you apply for your cpl and get your ratings so now once you have completed your flying training you have your elp you have your frdol you have all of your papers then you apply for your cpl license so i hope i was able to deliver the concept or the basic understanding of what is solo hours and why are they important what are dual hours what kind of different flying training actually we do the different type of flights we do to complete the different requirements of dgca what is the importance of recency what are the different things that you must have done within 6 months of before the date of applying uh, for your cpl license what is the important of simulator and why should we actually utilize the most of the simulator time to ensure that we can complete all of the requirements within 200 hours so that you are not exceeding the completion of these requirements of 100 hours of solo pic to more than 200 hours ensuring that you complete your cpl within these 200 hours and save your money i hope with this video i was able to bring a little more clarity to you guys about how flying training actually happens in india and how are the different requirements fulfilled in india this will be all from my side for today thank you for watching this video i'll see you in the next video this is animesh sanyal we will be signing off now bye bye